breaking news. A nuclear power reactor was shut down automatically in western Japan on Tuesday, but the cause of the suspension was not immediately known, its operator said. Operations at the number 4 reactor of Genkai nuclear power plant in Saga were automatically suspended at around 1.40 p.m., said Kyushu Electric Power, which runs the plant. Members of several anti-nuclear groups who are part of the Stop New Nuclear Alliance say they are barring access to Hinkley Point Power Station in Somerset and protest against EDF Energy's plans to renew the site with two new reactors. The new reactors at Hinkley would be the first of a new nuclear power stations to be built in the UK. There was a new wildfire in Mastrop, Texas, one month after massive blaze, says ABC. A month to the day a wildfire devastated parts of Bastrop, firefighters are back to work battling a new fire that is growing by the minute. Neighbors say the fire is burning at a Boy Scout camp called the Griffith League Scout Ranch. Now, it is being reported that more than 30 homes have been evacuated in Bastrop County as Central Texas firefighters still battle this other wildfire Tuesday evening. A helicopter crashed into the East River off of 34th Street in Manhattan Tuesday afternoon. NYPD spokesman Paul Brown told CBS that five people were on board the helicopter. The NYPD said the private helicopter, believed to be a Bell 206, missed its landing and didn't quite make it to the helipad. There were apparently no flotation devices on the skids. There is still no word if weather conditions played a role in the crash. Several viewers called News 4 reporting a death storm causing low to zero visibility in the area of Picacho Peak, where Avra Valley Fire confirms that they are responding to a massive multi-car accident on Interstate 10. High winds are dangerous. If you are in the area on I-10 East, going into Tucson, be careful. Reporting from Johannesburg, South Africa, a tornado hit the township of Daduza on Sunday, leaving thousands homeless. Mondali Gungu Billy, the mayor of Acre Haleni, said Monday that Daduza would be declared a disaster zone. National Cathedral reopens November 12th, but needs $15 million for earthquake damage and expenses. The English Gothic Cathedral in northwest Washington remains closed as crews work to stabilize large stone pinnacles and other decorative elements shaken from their foundations during the August 23rd quake. Mother Nature just didn't want to quit this weekend, as a late surge in an early season snowstorm dropped an additional four inches of snow on Snowshoe Mountain Resort on Sunday evening. Snow began late Friday evening. Marking September 30th as the official first day of snow, the earliest snowfall in six seasons at the Pocahontas County Resort in West Virginia. Takalau, a New Zealand-administered territory of about 1,400 people, has less than a week's drinking water after a long drought blamed on a La Nina weather pattern, Foreign Minister Murray McCulley said. McCulley said Tokalau declared a state of emergency late Monday following a similar move in neighboring Tuvalu, which has a population of fewer than 11,000 and where water is already being rationed in places. A giant underground reservoir of molten rock has been discovered under the deserts of Ethiopia by British geologists, the London Sunday Times reported. They targeted the far region in the Horn of Africa after a recent surge in volcanic activity and earthquakes plus the appearance of giant cracks in the rocky surface. Tectonic plates in the area are pulling apart and gradually creating a new ocean. Now, the scientists have mapped the colossal underground lake of magma that lies up to 20 miles 32 kilometers below the Earth's surface. By day, a red tide is unsightly and uninviting, with water the color of coffee. But at night, during this unusual phenomenon caused by a plankton bloom, the waves are a brilliant, almost neon blue. This wonderfully surreal scene has played out almost nightly along San Diego beaches for several weeks, luring spectators with cameras and video recorders. In a special outreach titled Space Farm 7, 
Seven of the nation's top agritourism farms have been selected to celebrate and honor the U.S. space program in collaboration with NASA this fall. Each farm has planted cone mazes that will feature designs celebrating NASA's achievements and progress in space. An increasingly popular phenomenon of crop circle type creations, each of the seven corn mazes will open this fall. New York's Attorney General sued Bank of New York Mellon Corporation in state court Tuesday, alleging that one of the world's largest custody banks defrauded pension funds when it improperly charged for currency transactions. In a civil complaint, New York Attorney General Eric Schneiderman says he is seeking nearly $2 billion the amount that the bank had generated in profits in the alleged scheme. A federal judge today accused the state of slight of hand and halted plans to end welfare benefits to nearly 41,000 Michigan residents. U.S. District Judge Paul Borman determined after a hearing today that the state failed to give proper notice to those it planned to cut off, and although the issue was brought to the federal court in a lawsuit filed by just three plaintiffs, the judge also granted class status to include everyone affected by the state's decision. An initiative that would let Montana voters undo legislative changes that gutted the state's medical marijuana law will be on the ballot in November 2012. According to the Montana Secretary of State, organizers for I-124 have collected enough signatures to make the ballot. Denmark has introduced what's believed to be the world's first fat food tax applying a surcharge to foods with more than 2.3% saturated fats, in an effort to combat obesity and heart disease. Danes hoarded food before the tax went into effect Saturday, emptying grocery store shelves. The new tax will be levied on foods like butter, milk, cheese, pizza, oils and meat. Underwater cloaking devices could be a step closer thanks to heated sheets of carbon nanotubes that deflect light from the surface of an object just like a mirage. Desert mirages occur when surfaces warmed by the sun bend like rays so that photons from the sky, rather than those reflected from the surface, reach an observer's eye an effect known as photothermal deflection. Existing invisibility cloaks use arrays of electromagnetic antennas to steer photons around an object, but these so-called metamaterials typically cover a narrow range of frequencies. When electrically heated, the nanotubes bend light waves to create a mirage, effectively cloaking the sheet and anything behind it. The folks over at Mexican architecture group BNK Architecture call this thing an earth scraper. It's a monstrous, beautiful, 65-story inverted skyscraper that hides a mini-city underground. Designed to be built smack dab in the center of Mexico City, BNKR's Earth Scraper is designed in such a way that it would incorporate Mexico's history and its design. The top 10 floors, which, here, would be the bottom 10, is a museum and cultural center dedicated to the Aztecs. Below that you've got retail space, then apartments and finally, deep underground businesses. Because, you know, that's where business do their best work. It all terminates some 300 meters below the surface. The interior of the structure is actually hollowed out, and there are bridges that extend out into the center of it so you can look down. Think the Grand Canyon Skywalk. A pyramid. Big surprise there. Perhaps you have seen the videos all over YouTube about DARPA's pet, a robot named Big Dog, the incredibly agile quadruped robot from Waltham, Massachusetts-based Boston Dynamics. Well, he has a bigger brother, that we know of. Videos from a keynote address by Boston Dynamics President, Mark Raybert, last week at the International Conference on Intelligent Robots and Systems in San Francisco, showed AlphaDog in action. He also showed a video of the latest version of his company's humanoid robot, Petman. The project started as an attempt to make a two-legged big dog but has evolved into a much more human-like form. Delaware company Innovatio IP Ventures is scaling up its patent litigation assault against businesses that offer wireless internet to customers, filing six infringement lawsuits this month against individual branches of some of the country's largest hotel chains. It's a new tech for the company, 
which began filing patent claims in March against coffee shops and restaurant chains, including Caribou Coffee, Cozy and Panera Bread Company, and department stores. Contemplating the company's approach suing the users of the technology rather than its manufacturers a logical question emerges, will the onslaught reach the front doors of average, Wi-Fi using, American households? As crazy as suing businesses over free Wi-Fi sounds, the really scary part is that Innovadio could eventually target residential Wi-Fi users as well. Internet companies such as Google, Twitter and Facebook are increasingly co-opted for surveillance work as the information they gather proves irresistible to law enforcement agencies, web experts said this week. Although such companies try to keep their users' information private, their business models depend on exploiting it to sell targeted advertising, and when governments demand they hand it over, they have little choice but to comply. CNN continues to try and paint Occupy Wall Street protest as a big joke. Seriously CNN? If you believe these images, and her words, then you are more gullible than those who fall for the joke where one is convinced that the word gullible is not in the dictionary. CNN, like usual, is painting a false picture, but, believe it if you want, and continue to be a second-hand entity. Or, do some research deeper than the front page of one of the media outlets that this should give you a true glimpse on how to react to such obvious propaganda, by believing the opposite they tell you. Better yet, get down to Wall Street, or start street action of your own. Power to the people, for sure, is to come, if we all take a stand. Also, be sure to check out FAIR's latest action alert about this debacle, and about CNN's fact check failure. The Transport Workers Union will go to court Monday to try to stop the city from forcing bus drivers to transport Wall Street protesters arrested by the NYPD, the Daily News has learned. The union, whose leaders voted last week to support the protesters, said police brass commandeered three MTA buses to transport many of the 700 demonstrators arrested on the Brooklyn Bridge on Saturday. The U.S. autumn may have begun, it seems, and... Despite mainstream media downplaying even ridiculing the movement supporters have faith the message will be understood. After nearly three weeks of occupying Wall Street in New York City, it is clear that the protest movement is migrating from coast to coast. Los Angeles at City Hall. Chicago outside the Federal Reserve Bank. In Boston, a tent city in the heart of the financial district. Families march in Denver. San Francisco and are being organized in more than 100 cities, says the Occupy Together website. Indigenous leaders from either side of the U.S.-Canada border held an emergency meeting in the basement of a South Dakota casino. They came from all over when flew in from Canada's frigid Great Bear Lake near the Arctic Circle, a husband and wife drove east on Highway 18 from their reservation, and several more drove west, on Interstate Highway 90. How to radically alter the energy policy of the United States, they wondered, and keep a foreign company far away from their land. After two days they drafted a Mother Earth Accord that they hope will galvanize indigenous opposition to the most contentious infrastructure proposal in North America, a privately built 1,661-mile-long oil pipeline set to carry crude from Alberta's oil sands to refineries on the Texas Gulf Coast. Some say they're fighting for the safety of their peoples, and others, to redress generations of conflict, poverty, and injustice. Our ancestors protected the land when they were alive, Rosebud tribal chief John Spotted Tail said at the meeting. Our belief is that we need to do the same. Tropical Storm Felipe Public Advisory 1100 p.m. Tuesday, October 4, 2011. Felipe turns west-northwestward. Some strengthening is possible during the next 48 hours. And Felipe could become a hurricane by Wednesday night or Thursday.